Now, the main reason why I wanted to come on here is because I saw your debate with that crazy uh, feminist woman. It was so yeah. crazy, dude. Was it? Oh, yeah. It was absolutely <laughs> great. Like, I cannot believe she said that, like, uh, white people cannot experience, like, racism. And how she said that, of course, because you're, like, white, you cannot, you cannot talk about racism and all that kind of stuff. It was ridiculous, dude. I believe that, that the most amazing uh, statements that, that she made were, were, first of all, white people... I mean, are, are useless. She said something like that. White people are useless. Yeah, that's not racist. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and my favorite, like almost uh, by the end of the of the debate, when she said that my grandparents uh, owned slaves. Okay, what like, the okay, fuck? Someone, okay, someone in the comments said like, uh, "Hey Tyler, say que onda Pedro." Que onda, Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but go on, go on, go on. No, 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 that, that, that's it. I, I mean, I, I thought that, the, the, I, I think that uh, the most amazing statements that, that she made were, were that. I, my, my grandparents having slaves and, uh, and you know, white people uh, being useless. And uh, that was, uh, first of all, it was like one of the most racist things I've ever listened to. And uh, and one of the most historically incorrect statements that I have ever ever uh, listened. Right, because like I don't understand why people think that black people cannot be racist either. Because sometimes in this country there are students who say that they cannot be racist because they don't have like the power in government. And I'm thinking to myself. Well, of course, like, they could be racist because, obviously, you don't need to have the freaking government to be racist, you know? It could happen person to person, one by one, you know? It's just I think ridiculous. That, I think the, the most clever thing that uh, uh, you told me the other day when we, we talked through WhatsApp, you told me that racism relies on the intention of a person. I mean, if you want to be racist, you are a fucking racist. Now, if you feel offended because you didn't, you did not understand my joke or my satire, which, by the way, is precisely um, attacking racism. Uh, I mean, th that's not racist. I mean, I, I think, and no, I, I do not think we have reached to the conclusion and we have seen some. Um, we 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 have we have proven that this woman from the other day, uh, she's she's a fucking rich girl, you know. She's a <laughs> fucking rich girl who was uh, feeling oppressed from her posh neighborhood, holding a glass of expensive wine, saying, "Oh my God." <laughs> I'm so oppressed because I have an Afro haircut and, uh, you know, I, I copy paste the Black Lives Matter uh, speech because that's it. I mean, that, that was literally her oppression, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny because, like, um, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for like employees to have like a certain hairstyle standard because you cannot really go to like a place and actually expect everybody to have like, you know, different hairstyle. It has to be like one uniform hairstyle. And so when I work at my job, they expect me to, of course, cut my hair and to look nice. It's not just because I'm black, obviously. It's because everybody has to look a certain way. Not just one group of people, but everybody has to be like a certain way. Also, for Black Lives Matter, like, uh, it's a very uh, complex uh, story. You want me to uh, share it with Black Lives Matter? Please. Okay, okay. So, Black Lives Matter, it started in 2015, I remember quite clearly. Now, it started back then because it was supposed to be like a response to police brutality. Like, obviously, police brutality is a really bad thing. And, of course, it happens not just to black people, obviously. 
it happens to pretty much everybody. I remember when I saw Black Lives Matter for the first time, of course, I thought, you know, all lives matter because it's not just, you know, black lives that matter against police brutality. It's also like everybody else because everybody is also affected by police brutality. I saw data from the Washington Times. It's like a newspaper in our country. I saw data and it says that um, basically white people are actually killed more in this country than black people. So, but anyway, it was a response to like police brutality for um, Black Lives Matter. And of course it had like really, really, really racist stuff. I remember quite clearly that there was like a journalist I saw on YouTube. It was like, yeah, 2016, 2017, where they went to like a Black Lives Matter meeting. And of course, like they were trying to, you know, talk about their issues. Then they saw the white guy and of course, they wanted to chase him out. <laughs> they tried to chase him out, I guess because he was white or something. And there was this also this incident I saw where there was like a group of people, they were at a library. And so what happened was like they went inside the building, like the Black Lives Matter activists went inside the building and they said, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. It's like, and they try to interrupt everybody there. There was also this one incident in like Canada where there was like a Black Lives Matter Canada because like there's not just Black Lives Matter in the United States. It's Black Lives Matter for like uh, everybody, like for all countries, like Black Lives Matter Japan or Black Lives Matter <laughs> France or whatever. So it's like there's different Black Lives Matter on the different countries, right? So and Black Lives Matter Canada, what happened was there was like the founder of Black Lives Matter Canada. She said, and I'm not kidding you, right? It's so like she said, I wish Allah does not give me the strength to kill white people on Twitter. It was so crazy. <laughs> so, Black Lives Matter. But that is, not race. But that is not racist because she ain't white. It was like so bad. It was terrible. Like, so it was like a lot of moments where it was like a lot of anti racist stuff. And I also remember seeing like in the news, it was like again three or two years ago where of course they asked like the people who were like at the Black Lives Matter rally for like the white people to be in the back, but the black people in the front. So, but yeah, like this, this movement has not been like, you know, really relevant as of lately though, because people got really ticked off about Black Lives Matter. Right, well, it, sadly, sometimes they, 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 they provoke the, the opposite uh, of what they are actually looking for, if they are looking for any good, uh, you know, in the first time, in the first place. Um, haven't we learned anything, right? I mean, I, I, I remember, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of leaders such as uh, Martin Luther King. And I remember his words saying that, well, it's not like I remember because I was there, but <laughs> I've seen it uh, on, on uh, you know, on YouTube, uh, his uh, speeches, famous speeches. And um, I remember his words saying that, you know, he, he was willing uh, for the day in which we do not see each other for the color of, of, our, of our skins, but for who we are, you know, we're just human beings and that's it. And that he dreamed about the day um, in which, uh, I, I don't know, a, a, a little black boy holds a, a, a little, uh, a, a, the hand uh, of a little white girl. And uh, where, where, where is that? I mean, I, I think, I believe that is the, 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 the end of racism. And I don't care about your, your, your skin color. I don't care about anything. Uh, I care if, you know, I like you because you're, you're a cool guy. And that's it. I don't give a fuck about anything else. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny because there was this famous actor. His name is Morgan Freeman. He did like a whole yeah. entire video like about against mm -hmm. Black History Month. Now, for those mm -hmm. in Argentina who don't know, in the United States, every February, we have Black History Month, where we celebrate like the history of Black people in this country. Now, basically, in the interview, what Morgan Freeman said was he didn't think that Black History Month was like the best way to respond to racism, and that the best way to respond to racism is not to think about race. And that's my personal thoughts, too, about Black History Month. I don't think Black History Month is good. Like, if there has to be, like, a history month, 
I think it has to be like American History Month because I think Black history in the United States is also American history too. That's great. Plus, I remember uh, Freeman saying that uh, no one should, uh, you know, make the whole, the whole, I mean, reduce the whole story of, of the African-American people to just one month. And, um, and I remember his, his words. He said, they asked him, how do we stop racism? Stop talking about it. Stop talking about race. Right, and, uh, right, right. And it's, I think, I think it's kind of uh, sad because you mentioned earlier about Martin Luther King. Like, besides, you, you probably, you guys probably heard about like the safe spaces in Argentina. I guess like everybody heard about it at this point. But we have even more than like the safe spaces in like our universities. For example, we have like these spaces for like minorities. For example, like a black only place or like an Asian only place in college campuses. It's like for the students, by the way, for the college campuses. So it's for like those minority groups. And so no one- You know else... how that was called? You know how that was called? Apathate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's sad because he, like people like Dr. King, he fought against like that kind of racism. But here we exactly. are. Here we are with those freaking separate buildings for different races. It's sad. It's like, we used to have like, of course, like white only churches, white only buildings, and then like black only this, black only that. And now they want it back. It's like yeah. the opposite of progressive. It's, it's unbelievable. Exactly, exactly. Speaking about the opposite of progressive, I, I think that, you know, Uh, there was a there, there was a moment in this debate with this with this uh, Porsche girl, in which I told her, well, you know, fat women could be offended or oppressed by your pictures, uh, you know, wearing just a bikini or you know exposing yourself as, 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 as you know as a model or, or whatever. And she was like, oh my god, I, I I did not see that one coming, and. I believe that even if if we take the the you know the politically political correctness uh, narrative we we could say that she was absolutely committing cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> she was Okay, so let's let's I'm going to talk about like the uh, the cultural appropriation stuff. Okay. So this idea of cultural appropriation You guys probably know this already, but it came from my country. So, so this idea of cultural appropriation is basically saying that it's not okay for us to borrow from like uh, different cultures. And so by that logic, I, Tyler, can I speak to you, you denim in English because you appropriated my language, damn it. So um, there's also- we shouldn't, we, shouldn't even be, we shouldn't even be talking to each other. I mean, I'm borrowing. Yeah. You know, a, a, an American's uh, friend. You know, I, I'm. I'm. You. You should be talking to an American, to uh, to an African American, actually. Only yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. those are the rules. Those are the rules. Yeah. <laughs> But Jesus like, it's just. God. It's like you cannot share cultures or anything with this idea. Right. And I don't. It's like a form of separatism, because I it think is. It's like you need to actually. The best way to discover about different cultures is to try out the food travel to places, learn about new things. How are you going to do that when you want to separate yourself from the world? Because there's like a lot more stuff outside your country, outside where you live at, to know about if you learn more about the culture and the people. It's just, I don't it's, understand it, why they want this. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what, what the whole point of, of all of this, um, I mean, what, what's the, what the whole point of all of this is. Um, and you know, you, you, I mean, your, your country creates all of this and my country, uh, creates a copycat, uh, a really, really, really inexpensive copycat, which is absolutely, uh, horrifying. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. You, like, so, okay. Like there's a comment that asked me the question right now. It says, Tyler, repeat after me. Zoro <laughs> Semiyada. <laughs> you know what that means. Okay. You know what that means. But going back to what you were saying. Okay. 
<laughs> you can say it. You, we can say it together. Zurdos de mierda. We can say it. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, oh my god, Zurdos de mierda. We work, <laughs> we're working on this movie. We're working on this movie uh, that um, makes fun and creates a whole satire of um, what the what the or how the movies industries uh, create the, the movies industry creates um, stereotypes you know so we um, we we attack uh, racism of course we attack sexism we attack stereotypes every stereotype even the white strong straight hero uh, male hero right we we also attack that uh these guys have not even seen uh the movie because it doesn't exist yet it's not yet out there um and they still uh you know you know you made blackface so that's racist no we are we are precisely being racist in order to make you know to i don't know if the word is correct ridiculize yeah ridiculous right to 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 ridiculize uh racism and sexism and stereotypes that's what the movie is about and it's so fucking obvious because we go full retard it's like it's like so fucking obvious that that that's what we're doing so right uh, like, i know that I there, think, there's like, a whole is i think the whole issue with the the blackface stuff like obviously i think people have to wait to see your movie because obviously you know the saying like don't judge a book by its cover it's like the same thing you have to wait until you actually read the book until you can actually judge it so i think people need to wait to see your movie and also i as far as the whole entire blackface stuff I can understand, like, basically, I know in the past, like, in my country, I guess, like, because of past history, because they had, like, movies like that, that's why people are kind of sensitive to that. But I also believe that there's also context where people can actually realize it's actually satire. So there was, like, of course, like, in the debate, you mentioned about Tropic Thunder. That's, like, a good movie where basically, yeah. like, the blackface and the, everything. It was funny to me. Like, when I saw, like, Robert Downey Jr. for the first time, I just laughed my butt. Like, it was so funny. Because <laughs> I, I actually thought he was uh, a very convincing black guy. I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> he did a great job, actually. Yeah, but then there was also this movie. Act. It was also a movie called White Chicks. And there was, like, right. black actors with the white makeup. And so... Obviously, there's context where it's like a joke, so not everything is offensive, you know? Well, but the other day, what, one of these uh, professional off offended people uh, told me that white chicks was actually transphobic. <laughs> so, you know, everything, you know, this is like religion. Everything is a fucking sin, you know? <laughs> I, I just fought it. Oh, man, Jesus will send you to hell because you <laughs> fucking fought it. Yeah, like the whole entire idea of white guilt is not just white guilt, but anything with social justice is like original sin. Of course, um, I, how I'm gonna try to explain it without? Oh my, I don't want to offend anybody watching this. Oh god, but uh, basically, with the, okay, I don't even give a crap right now. So what you have with original sin, of course, everybody needs to bow down to God, right? So for the case of social justice, of course, like everybody has, like you know evil white supremacy and they must bow down to the religion of social justice so right exactly yes, exactly it's, it's like you know it's like being white it's like the forbidden fruit you know right which is like the original sin i mean right. why did you do that why are you white why did you eat that forbidden fruit <laughs> Here in Argentina, here, here comes the, the, this is the best of all. Here in Argentina, we're not even that white. We're a <laughs> fucking mix of, we are a fucking mix of every fucking race in the fucking world. We're not even white. This woman was copying, I mean, she was copying the speech of Black Lives Matter. And in, there was a moment in which she said, 
Well, because we shouldn't say, you know, I don't want to say the N word. The what? We don't have an N word here. We don't have, I mean, I get it. That is a, a, a huge insult in your country. Of course it is. We yeah, have okay, insults let, let, here. Let me, try, let me try to explain the N word stuff for like people in Argentina, okay? Right. So, and English, of course, like uh, there's like the N I G G E R. That's supposed to mean like a, a subhuman person. And of course, like basically people use that as an insult to like, you know, say that black people are subhuman. And of course, like right. there's like a difference though. Like there's like two different N words though. Like of course the one that I mentioned earlier, but then there's also like the N I G G A, which kind of means like brother or like sister or bro. So I notice like sometimes on Twitter, especially like Spanish Twitter, they tend to mix the two words. Like they would say like the one that's like the N I G G A is like a racist term, but it's not real. It's not at all because people use that. Sometimes. So I think like um, when it comes down to the N word, like, of course, like in Spanish, like in your country, like they refer to like the black people as Nerito or something. Yeah, Nerito. Oh, my God. I forgot. Yeah. Nerito. Yeah, yeah. And so it's we like, even, you know, like, we like, even little blackie, it. like little blackie. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like, and, like, and we even use it here. We sometimes we even use it here as a, you know, as a friendly um, way of treating people, you know. Right. And as uh, as nicknames, right. it's not like we don't have like an N word here. Right, 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 right. It's like so. I think that woman is just wrong because there's like no equivalent of that in your country. So I don't know what she's no. talking about. It's just so strange. <laughs> like, how would you use like an American argument for Argentina? It's exactly. <laughs> She just copy pasted from Wikipedia. I mean, she 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 said, "Oh, I, I, you know, I'm kind of brown, so I will just pretend that uh, you know." Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm being stupid right now, but what I mean is that I think that she was looking for an identity. Okay. That that, that clearly she she doesn't have, and clearly this not apply to the context of our country, and that is what also makes me mad you know she was pretending to be something that she's not just to be offended just to feel oppressed because apparently here in argentina to the upper classes you know to the to the posh you know uh, i i i call i call them well to the posh millennials you know being or feeling oppressed is kind of fashion you know what i mean Mm -hmm. It's fashionable, you know, it's like, you're not that cool if you don't have, you know, a privilege point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm retarded. Cool. <laughs> that, that, that means, that means I can say whatever I want. You know, smart people should fucking die. <laughs> and that, that's not the way it works. That's not the way it fucking works. <laughs> I mean that that's the way I see it. Maybe I'm overreacting but but <laughs> but clearly this was not an oppressed woman. She doesn't live uh, in a context like like maybe you can tell us about police brutality. We know that that's a whole thing in America, but that's not the context here in Argentina. Basically in Argentina there is no law. So there's no <laughs> You know, police brutality, it happens from time to time, but not like in Baltimore, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, uh, it's kind of funny because, like, yeah, Baltimore is in the same state of Maryland. Like, Maryland is the state I live in, and it's like an hour or two away from me, actually. And I hate going to Baltimore, by the way. Like, if anyone want to travel to the United States, do not go to Baltimore. Do not go to Baltimore. <laughs> Go to anywhere else. Go to Los Angeles. Go to Dallas, Texas. Go to New York. Do not go to Baltimore. Especially if you're Latin, like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it was like, um, it's kind of sad because, like, when people try to compare different countries, like, all these, it's like it's not going to work out because they don't take into account, like, the different sort of cultures or, like, how people think or, like, you know, how society works. So what happens here will not work in, like, Argentina and vice versa. And so they're very different.